Remember in March last year when you said you thought John Doyle was good faith? Yeah, I take that back. Folks! You have any idea how long it's been since we've enjoyed content from the one, the only, Jonathan Delaney? My God, I mean, it's been, it's been ages. The truth about simps. Heck off, Kami. John Doyle has done a very rude thing by having a large amount of subscriber growth since the last time I covered him. Very, very much, very unappreciated, Doyle. I don't like that very much. Let's see how he's been doing. Does he still have the intro? It doesn't matter if you're a big boy or an itty bitty boy. If you think that body shaming Lizzo is good content, then you're not 100% that bitch. You're just a bitch. And if that truth hurts, then you deserve to develop a peanut allergy and get pushed to the floor of a Texas Roadhouse waiting area. I'm sure that will feel good as hell. And Lizzo, if you're watching this, f the haters. You are a queen. They couldn't f it up to the tempo if they wanted to. Mm. Whoa, hey, cool. Chapter 2. The Psychology of the Simp. Wait, what are we... Analogously to the Wait, is this... Wait, the is that Doyle? Wait, why is he... Did he finally hit puberty? It looks like he's got some acne going on now. The Psychology of the Simp. Analogously to the question of the chicken and the egg, one has to ask himself when dissecting the simp, exactly which is the causal factor in this clearly symbiotic relationship. Orthodox simp theory will have you believe that it is only through the cultural manufacturing of the thought that the simp can manifest. However, this fails to maintain its structural integrity. What, what are we t okay, well, ho, okay, wait, listen. I'm here for the sociology of simping, okay? I'm here for it, all right? I'm very, in I'm very interested to see where this goes, okay? But, yeah, orthodox simp theory. I'm very curious, okay? But uh, the format of this video has, um... Has, has left me discombobulated. ...both in theory and practice, for it is demonstrably correct that given the law of female obedience, the thought can only manifest once the simp has provided a path of lesser resistance for the necessary siphoning of external gratification. So I think this is red pill stuff. This is, uh, this is female hypergamy. By the way, red pillar shit is unironically way cringier than asking for feed pics on Instagram, okay? Um, also, how is this a simp? Men are pig shirt, yes, that includes me. Wait. But that's not a simp thing. That's just like the cringy performative self-denunciation thing. To John Doyle, does simp mean... Does simp mean just like... Every time a dude does something cringy? It is precisely because of this relationship that all efforts to cure the modern strain of thoughtery must originate with the simp, but more importantly, with the cognitive deviation of society, which is a- Simp means sucker idolizing mediocre pussy. So a simp is a derogatory term for somebody who will like go out of their way to adulate and worship like a, a, a bitch who isn't even worth it, basically. That's the gist of it. But simp does not necessarily mean reply guy, and simp does not necessarily mean the coomer who constantly asks for nudes. A simp does not necessarily mean like a pussy worshiper or someone who believes all women are queens. And a simp doesn't mean someone who engages in cringy pseudo-feminist self-denunciations of masculinity. These are not all the same thing, but I'm going to, but I'm going to assume that all of these things, yeah, just mean like soy boy. Like this is just a video on soy boys. That kind of sucks because I, I was interested in seeing like the simp philosophy specifically. You got to get your terms right, you know? It's allowed for the simp to migrate from atypical cringe to the elevated platform of normalcy and even in more unfortunate cases. Also, this weird like... National Geographic documentary, like classical music being played over a 14 year old looking guy explaining to me in, in pseudo anthropological terms, the behavior of people online is really strange. I don't like this aesthetic. This has always come off very pretentious to me. This is promotion. Hey! Hey! I, the classic, it ain't changed. Back in the old days. It's the emo! John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. It's the emo! We still got him! He's still here! 
Ah, th these, are the, these are the good old days, man. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Do you ever- Is it the, still the same set? It's still Heck Off Kami. He's got the little Jesus dude. Uh, Tesla, Smith & Wesson, Enjoy Capitalism, the Bolsheviks, and he's... Yeah, okay, it's it's the same set. No changes, I don't think. I wonder why men have become so feminine. Why testosterone is dropping so much in the West. Well, I hope you've been wondering... Wait. I don't know what evidence there is that men have become less feminine. What is this? Have average testosterone levels been decreasing? Uh, yeah, studies show men's testosterone levels have been decreasing for decades with an average decline of about 1% per year. Probably like a food thing, right? Yeah, it seems to me probably like a food or like a dietary thing. Maybe stress, yeah? Yeah, soy milk, Pepe. Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested in, in seeing like what that is. I don't actually know what my testosterone level is. I mean, you would kind of expect that it would be high. Because, because I'm like this big hairy guy, you know? But I have no idea. Wondering because it's a serious problem that no one really seems to be talking about, so... Why, wait, why is it a problem? I'm curious. We're gonna talk about that today, uh, but yeah, did you like that excerpt that I shared with you from my new book? The other day I was bored, what? and so I decided to start outlining a book because it's all been very tiresome recently with all the simps and with all the thoughts and so- What? 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 It- Yeah, see, I was just- I was laying in bed, and I was just like, I was so bored of all the simps and thoughts, so I just started outlining a book. This is like a per- this feels like a perfect synchronicity of the, like, slash I am very smart. Shit, like, oh, I was just laying in my room thinking about it all. Yeah, <sighs> thinking about the, the triviality of the common man when a book outline came to me. It's, it, it seems like that, you know? So, and like, obviously it's a joke, right? When we talk about like thought patrol and simping and never e-girls, like it's basically said as a joke. But what's important to remember is that like all good jokes, there was a large degree of truth behind them. And so we're gonna talk about what simps are, what they do. Uh, we're gonna talk about what causes people to become simps. And there's not like one reason for it, but I think there are a few that are important to acknowledge things like declining testosterone. I'm really excited, I'm really excited for this. Uh, social media, lack of fathers, and I've got data for all of that, but that being said, it's also important to understand that there is a difference between a reason for something and an excuse for something. So we'll talk about why simping- Oh shit, he's not letting them off the hook, boys. Oh shit. He's got, he's got reasons, but he's not excusing you. He's, he's explaining he's not forgiven. It's bad. Uh, then we'll talk about how to stop simping, and that includes how to stop being a simp, and also how to stop others from being simps. But yeah, you saw the beginning of this video. These men are absolutely insufferable and cringe. And so wait, so again, he just means soy boy. Does he know what simp means? Because again, simp means sucker idolizing mediocre pussy. There were things in there that had nothing to do with that. The first person just seemed like a stan for Lizzo. That's not being a simp. Like, even remotely. Those are two completely different things. Um, and the the And then there was a video of some girls twerking? Is that simping? I, I, I'm not sure. It's like we can point and laugh, but if people are only perceiving this to be a joke, then they're ignoring the problem, but also the gravity of the implications of what's causing this behavior from men. So we'll start with the video for now, but if it gets worse, who knows? We might have to author a treatise against this type of behavior. Working title is Never E-Girls, The Case Against Simping. And this, this is cringe. I just wanna, I, I have nothing else to say. This is cringe right here. Of course, covers a broad range of subjects. Chapter one, why never e-girls? Chapter two, the psychology of the simp. Chapter three, the psychology of the thought. Chapter four, the fallacy of spare coochie. Spare coochie, spare coochie, ma'am. Squidward, Squidward, is that you? Uh, I, uh... Chapter five. How there has been an interesting change in the tone of these videos. Before, when I watched John Doyle's videos, I felt like I was watching the earnest high school like project of like a classic conservative. And now I feel like I'm watching something that leans more towards like alt-right demagoguery. This feel th this is shit posting. And everything he's talking about right now, this never e-girls thing, this kind of sounds like Fuentes rhetoric actually. 
Yeah. The, yeah, this sounds like Fuentes rhetoric. Ne uh, never eat gills, folks. You know, uh, maybe write up a little uh, a little treatise on um, how to stop this 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 simping menace. You know, it it does sound yeah like a little bit like a like Fuentes red ice kind of stuff. Uh, trying to appeal. He's got the Zoomer memes in there now. The fifteen year old SpongeBob meme, um, which is pretty good. How to restore the family, chapter six. The How to restore the family? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Nobility of thought patrol, chapter seven. Abstinence is epic. Chapter eight. See that that right there. Stuff like abstinence is epic. It's the ungodly union of traditional conservatism, which is as far away from punk rock as you can get, with the disaffected mimetic language of internet zoomers. Know your role, chapter nine. On know your role. On becoming the gamer in chapter 10, conclusion. Becoming the ga- See, and again, it's all just a joke, obviously. It's all just a joke. This does sound exactly like a Fuentes bit right here. I don't know if you guys watch America First at all. I do from time to time. This sounds exactly like one. The difference being that Doyle over here is more um, earnest, which makes it cringier than when Nick does it. Because you know that every time Nick finishes a stream, he wanders off to the back set room to like molest a gun and like lovingly rub the barrel against the underside of his chin, you know? Whereas Doyle, I feel like, um, uh, 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 might, you know, still be clinging on to life. It's going to be a real page turner. We're going to get Nick to write the forward. It's going to dominate. All right. We'll take back everything that I've said um, uh, before with all the analysis. Uh, we didn't need to do it. Um, it's to it's never mind. Could have just waited to get a little get a little farther. You know, boy, I'm on point. Make the hardcover nonfiction list for like the better part of a decade. But again, we don't want it to come to that if at all possible. So. We're mainly going to focus on simps right now, but we might talk about thoughts in another video. But for those of you who don't know, a simp is a guy like the ones you saw at the beginning. The best way to think of it is like a guy who was whipped, but it's even worse. No! It has a specific meaning. Getting a pedicure for my best guy friend ever. Now, if I can only get a boyfriend like this. No, this is a dude in the friend zone. These words have different fucking meanings, dude. Jesus Christ, John Doyle is younger than I am. I'm like a fucking arc, like a like an archaeological fossil compared to John Doyle. And I feel like I'm more familiar with the, the difference. See, and when you conflate all of these words, what you do is uh, uh, you gain the ability to ascribe tendencies of any one word to someone of any other word. You, you now you now get the ability. So when you ascribe all these things together, soy boys, simps, uh, stands, uh, uh, people in the friend zone, whatever, when you align all these memes together, now you have the ability to, uh, 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 you know, um, insult a person who you assign to one of these groups with characteristics that are assigned to all of these groups. It's interesting, though. I had long postulated that John Doyle was destined to go alt-right. Uh, this isn't surprising to me at all. And it's funny because I used to have an email correspondence with a girl who was friends with him in high school who disagreed vehemently with his positions, and she was like, he's getting, like, crazier and crazier, but I still hope that you could be nice to him because there's a good boy underneath all of that. Every Actually, I very often get messages from people who are friends with alt-right figures who tell me, like, they used to not be like this. Or like the story is always like in high school they were picked on and they kind of I adopted conservatism as a cope ideology or something. You know what I mean? Whatever the case may be. Um, I I've long suggested this. What, what tipped me off is that a while ago, um, John Doyle said that the only reason why... Um, uh, uh, the only reason that being homosexual was removed from the DSM uh, was because of political pressure and not because of like any legitimate psychological reason. Um, so I figured that was like way farther on than the average conservative position. Um, I don't know how he feels about the Jews though. Maybe, maybe cause, cause Nick's obviously a neo-Nazi. I don't know if Doyle is a Nazi or just a fascist. Because he's not even with the girl. 
These are guys that orbit girls online. They shower them with attention, validation, compliments, just hoping and praying that one day she's going to realize what a nice guy I am and how I've always been there for her. And then she's going to want me. It's like, okay, that's what a simp is by definition. But they're no, no, this this could refer to like four different things. This is beta orbiter. This is a beta orbiter. Like, why? are also guys that white knight for women. You know, like if you're at a party and you make a joke about some girl and she laughs at it, but then this other guy comes up. Don't you ever disrespect a woman like that in front of me, bro. You better apologize right now. And it's stop. Like, and that's not to say that disrespecting women is okay, but you know the guys I'm talking about. These are guys that unnecessarily defend these women because they think that it's going to score points with them. And it's always cringe, and every man sees right through it. Male feminists are a great example of white knights. And you might see. Now we're, now we're bringing in male feminists to this. I remember I've said before that there was no such thing as an honest male feminist, and that's true. And we'll get into that in a bit more detail in a second. But basically my thesis is that single mothers and so- So what we've done now is we've just taken every single guy that a conservative would call cringe, and we've all put this under the simp label. I guess I can stop complaining about this, but I feel like if you're doing a video on simping, you really should just focus on simping and not spread it out to like a million different things. Now, I've talked about this before, of course. I've said this in multiple videos. If you're doing any cringy, like, uh, performatively den like denouncing masculinity to appeal to women or you're white knighting or whatever like this is all bad behavior you shouldn't engage in that stuff and it is cringe but you know i keep the terms apart social media aided by an unprecedented decline in testosterone have created a generation of weak men and this often manifests as becoming a simp and let me be clear when i say that like single mothers have helped create this that's not necessarily their f so i would love i would absolutely love to see evidence that a decline in testosterone has led to an increase in people engaging in this behavior. This is that biological essentialism that fascists love to lean into right here. Uh, it can't be social factors. It can't be, uh, it can't be men are behaving this way due to socioeconomic factors. It can't be due to a change in culture or technology. It absolutely has to be to a biological deficiency on the part of the people who are engaging in that behavior because that essentialism is is necessary to fascists fault or it's not necessarily that they did this intentionally it's just an acknowledgement that mothers are mothers and they cannot be fathers and those roles are decided what the fuck does that mean decidedly different of course there are exceptions right there always are but exceptions do not override overwhelming tendencies which can be substantiated with mountains of data. Well, the mountains of data actually indicate that there was no harm done to a child if a child is raised by two men or two women. Um, that has been 100% substantiated. There is no evidence to indicate that a person absolutely needs to be raised by exactly one woman and exactly one man. I'd love to see those mountains of data, by the way, um, that, that, that causatively prove um, that being raised by two men or two women or whatever harm a child. Keep in mind that the nuclear family has only been a thing for a few hundred years, like as a staple of society. And that for thousands of years before that, you usually raised kids in villages. Like, you know, uh, raising kids was a communal exercise. And sometimes that would mean that you're with your dad and your uncle and your mom died in the war. Um, and you'd have your brothers and you'd all get raised by dudes. And sometimes it would be the opposite. Most of the time it'd be a composite of both. But there's just no evidence to suggest what his claim is here. Skelly is ready if you're in any way interested still. No, it'll have to be later. So the reason we're going to talk about the effects of boys not having fathers present first um, is because the effects of that are much harder to reverse, assuming that they can even be reversed. What are right? we talking um, about? As compared to the general decline in testosterone levels on average. And so one of the biggest reasons for that is that the relationship that you have with your dad is what socializes you as a child and teaches you to push yourself to your source limits and your testosterone levels can actually respond positively to this for example um if you take two men and you measure their testosterone levels before a competition if you measure them again after the competition the man who won the competition will measure higher than previously and the man who lost the competition will measure lower what does that have to do with your initial claim you can compete with women too also this is just so you know this is very gay what what this this source this source implies uh, some very gay shit. I just want that known. But th this doesn't, um, this is, guys, remember the Mott and Bailey? We all know the Mott and Bailey, right? The Mott and Bailey is when you pretend, say you're going to defend a claim, but then when that claim is challenged, you defend a different claim. So the claim he's making is that you need a man to teach you competitions so you can have high testosterone levels. 
or something, like as a parent. And then the source that he's providing is one that says that when you engage in a competition, your test levels are higher at the end. That's it. These are irrelevant data pieces. You can compete with women. Women, this effect that he's pointing out here would affect women too. He said men, when men compete, listen to him. Men and you measure their testosterone levels before a competition. If you measure them again after the competition, the man who won the competition will measure higher than previously, and the man who lost the competition will measure lower. That's so interesting. He says man, but when I look at the abstract of the data, it doesn't actually mention gender. Testosterone rose before and after matches. Players with the highest pre-mass testosterone had the most positive improvement in mood before their, mass, uh, before their matches. After matches, winners with rising testosterone. That's weird. There's nothing here that says anything about men. But he's masculinizing the results because doing so makes it seem as though he's proving the point that he's trying to prove. Which it doesn't. Even if that was just for men, it wouldn't. But that's strange. Why would he, oh, why would he misrepresent that data? Not the first time I've caught you doing that, Doyle. ...than previously, and having higher testosterone gives you a greater chance of competing successfully in general, as we'll talk about. So you can actually create a positive feedback loop like this when you're succeeding. Uh, so you see... <laughs> Wait, is that how we think it works? Like if you win a competition, your test levels get higher, and then you do like more shit with higher test levels, to, which let you win more competitions to get higher test level. Does he think that a test level is like a high score? Uh, like you can just keep raising it? Just keep leveling up, bro. Just keep, just keep doing competitions. Your testosterone level averages out at a certain point, and there are fluctuations in that testosterone level based on a wide variety of factors. What is this, the feedback loop? His test levels are getting out of control! We gotta shut him down! He's winning! He won't stop winning! Like, like what was the point that's being cemented here? Exceed, your testosterone increases, then you succeed more, you're more likely to, etc. Wait, no, he actually believes that! What?! Wait, no, I wasn't, I'm not joking. He actually believes that. Where's the source on that one? I noticed you you provided a 30 year old source on how winning a competition increases testosterone. Where's the source on you can enter a test feedback loop that sends you to Super Saiyan level four, etc. But this can't happen if you don't have the foundation present, which comes from your dad. Source needed. Without that foundation, you're not going to be socialized, you're not going to want to push yourself to your limits, and you won't have discipline or self-control. And you won't- I have, I have mountains and mountains of data to prove this point. Here's a link on how winning a competition makes your test levels higher. So, as I was saying, a man is absolutely necessary in the life of a child because only they can provide this benefit. Like- <laughs> develop a capacity. No, I don't have empathy. any sources. Again, Thank these you. Are observed tendencies, not rules. Obviously, there are exceptions and you can overcome obstacles. But let's remember that obstacles exist for these young men in the first place. Right. So young, young everyone, this testosterone effect affects women as well. We've seen that the amount of time that a father spends with a child is one of the strongest predictors of empathy in adulthood. And the reason for that is that the dad enforces the boundaries. Mom Interesting. I would love to see this. The family origins of empathetic concern. Also, I never heard that before. The man is the one that reinforces empathy. Usually, like, uh, usually it's the, the people say that, like, Evo Psych dudes will say it's the woman. Okay, let's see what this guy has to say about it. Moms tend to set more boundaries, but dads tend to be the ones who actually enforce them. So a mom might say that your bedtime is 9 p.m., but you can 15 more minutes your way into 9.45 pretty easily, right? But if a dad says that your bedtime is 9 p.m., guess when bedtime is? It's 9 p.m. And so what that does is it teaches the child to respect boundaries, and by teaching them to respect boundaries and... This is literally not... <laughs> The study examined whether adult empathetic concern was associated with parental behavior in early childhood. Subjects were drawn from a longitudinal sample first investigated, blah, blah, from, from 1957, by the way. So this is a longitudinal sample that had its roots in the 50s for a study in the 1990s that he's using to prove a point 30 years later um, that means you need to have like a man. 
completed an adjective checklist from which an index of empathy concern was derived. Scores in the index were regressing from 11 parent interventions from maternal interviews when the subject were five years old. The results revealed that a significant multiplier are indicating that taken together, the parenting dimensions predicted the level of empathetic concern at age 31. Adult levels of empathetic concern were most strongly related with the following parenting dimensions, paternal involvement in child care, maternal tolerance of dependent behavior, maternal inhibition of child's aggression, maternal satisfaction with the role of the mother. This has nothing to do, for one, what John Doyle is saying is that like men intrinsically set, what, what, what is, what, what is he saying? That men intrinsically set boundaries, but women intrinsically enforce boundaries or something? Or, or, or like, or, or that? I would love to see any evidence to suggest that these are intrinsic behaviors associated with men or women. Is it the other way around? It doesn't matter. It depends on the person, you know? And all this study indicates is that the presence of these conditions, which are associated with maternal or paternal um, uh, behaviors, um, tend to predict empathy. This does not prove that you need a man in like a kid's life to, uh, to, to help them develop empathy. Like that, that is just not supported by the available data. This is why, and I've said this before, guys, people like this are more dangerous than people like Nick, I think. Because to an uneducated person, um, John Doyle might seem like he has his shit together because he like posts source, but all the sources that he posts are ancient fucking single study non-meta analyses that do not relate to the actual point that they are making. They consistently do this. Every time any source is cited by these people, you have to go over it. It's very important because they will slip so much bullshit by you. And if they're not providing a source, that usually means that their claim is so ostentatious that, um, uh, um, that they couldn't even find anything to support it, you know? treat them seriously, you're teaching them to respect the needs of others. Now, what moms bring to the table is the understanding that children need empathy, which is very important, but because moms are less likely to enforce boundaries, that empathy can be used against them without the presence of a father. So basically, empathy is a virtue, and mothers are empathetic and nurturing towards their children by nature, but if that- I mean, so are fathers? What What is this? What It's like, as we all know, men have a 6.2 rating on the rule enforcement scale, and females have a 3.8. What the fuck are you talking about? Everyone, it's funny. He says, you know, empathy is a virtue. Being around men teaches you empathy. And then he says, women are naturally empathetic to their children. This, the ways in which they attempt to reassert like their bullshit projected traditional gender roles. Everyone is sympathetic to their kids. Like that's biologically how you're supposed to be. Go tell go tell a father, like a good loving father, that he, that he isn't like predisposed to loving his children or something or being empathetic towards his children. They'll smack you silly. Only goes from parent to child without requiring reciprocity from the child, then it's going to become a vice. And what dads help with is drawing a line between empathizing with the child and being controlled by- This is this is just storytelling. I, I don't even know what the fuck he's going on about. Does he have a script for this? The desires of that child. And so without that presence, the child is going to try to exploit the empathetic and nurturing instincts of the mother to satisfy their own desires. And they're quite often very successful at that. And so this ends up teaching- So wait. All moms will just let their kids walk over them? I don't know if this guy's like projecting or whatever. This is not the experience that I or many of my friends, I have no, what is this storytelling? Ah, yes, all men are stoic chads who, who uh, set or enforce boundaries, but the mom will set them, but the kid will walk over the mom, what? Yeah, this is hard projection. I don't know. I don't know if Doyle over here like asked his mom for a handy one time, and um, and she like gave in because he was mommy's special boy, and since then he's just kind of assumed women will do whatever you ask of them if they're if you're their kid. I I I don't know like where he came at this from, but th I just <laughs> it's really weird. And the child to be emotionally manipulative towards people because they lack that empathy because they were never taught it. And just as important in the relationship between fathers and their children is how they interact with each other through activities. Kids need to roughhouse. We've seen that studies of baby rats that engage in rough and tumble activity find that they become less aggressive and have more social skills as adults. And the same is true of kids. Firstly, because it- uh, Okay. Okay. Teaches them that they're not fragile. 
they have some confidence in themselves, like they fall off the couch. I will say, by the way, this is true. I've seen studies to this effect. Letting kids roughhouse, play around, explore places, you know, get in a little bit of danger, playhouses, whatever, um, that is good for kids. I agree with that. I don't know why moms can't do this. They're like, wow, that didn't even hurt that bad. I'm basically Superman, right? Like stuff like that. But they also realize their own capacity to hurt other people, which is arguably just as important because it's like, okay, well, Johnny, your sister doesn't want to play with you anymore because you smacked her in the head with a pirate sword. And so you kind of think to yourself, okay, well, I like playing with my sister. So I guess if I want to keep playing with her, I should probably avoid uh, smacking her in the head with my pirate sword in the future. And dads are the ones that facilitate that type of play because my- As, as it's well known, mothers will never tell their kids not to smack each other with with pirate swords, but dads will. You need a dad around in case a pirate sword is there because otherwise the the kid might do a hit and the mom won't be able to stop. What what are what are we moms don't really like it. Right, roughhousing tends to scare mothers because not only is she fearing for the safety of her children, but then that's amplified because she looks at dad and she's like, oh great, he's behaving like a child too. No, what? No, I don't know. I mean, I'm anecdote anding over here, but my mom was more permissive of me and my brother wrestling than my dad was. Yeah, this, he, this is literally just like mommy issue storytelling. What the fuck is he going on about? Do people watch this and assume this is in any way like a legitimate reflection of like, but the I I I the level of projection here is fucking insane to me. Is this the fifties? Well, that's the thing. What everything that he's saying that he's treating like biological fact is just a projection of fucking black and white movies. He's read he's read too many comics where the the mom will say something and the father will say, "Listen to your mother, dear," while smoking a pipe and reading a reading a newspaper on the couch or something. That's the th like that's it. That's the whole lens through which he. There's a really interesting article that I read back in my college days about the reciprocity of social expectation, how people will live their lives the way media tells them to live it, and then media will shape their production off the way people live their lives. It was about MTV, how MTV produced this youth culture, and they were basically bullshitting it because it was a bunch of like 50 year olds in charge, you know, but what they were doing was observing the kids and they were reflecting youth culture off what they saw the kids doing, but the kids were only basing their behavior off what they learned off MTV. So it was like this this cycle um, that you can't really escape. And that's kind of what we're looking at here with John Doyle. John Doyle, you know, consumed a bunch of, I guess, I don't know if this is like mommy issues or like if he just watched a bunch of like I Love Lucy or something. And now he's regurgitating this, supporting it with 800-year-old non-meta-analysis articles that don't even support his point every five minutes. Um, and, and he's producing this narrative for a new generation. Things that are not necessarily true being prescribed as biological truths because the people who are advocating for them um, are either incredibly stupid or, or are um, willing to lie for a political agenda. Like, you know, she'll, she'll come in because she hears screaming. She runs in and it's just you, your dad, and your sister, and you're all just beating each other with N4 swords. And then you all just kind of pause and like, look at mom like a deer in the headlights. Uh, but playing with dad is fun because it's like a roller coaster. Like what? it's exciting because you know you're safe. Dad might be what? throwing you into water or a pile of leaves. Maybe he's got you sitting on his shoulders while walking around downtown. Maybe he's throwing you off his shoulders onto your bed. A lot of dad stuff is just throwing your child. Very this, this is... This is just storytelling. This is so weird. Doyle, I don't know what, we need like Freud in on this. We need like a guest streamer or something. I need like a, like a psychotherapist cause he's just like saying shit. What? One thing that astonishes me, sorry, I have an eyelash in my eye and my nails are really long and it is killing me. One thing that really astonishes me is like how boring the world they imagine is like, in their in their world, all moms are the same and all dads are the same. And you just have to fulfill your biological role of having children. There's no room for individual expression. There's no room for, um, there's no room for like individuality. It's just, you just have like a slot and you have to fill that slot and then that's it. And that's, that's life. Life is just finding roles that were 
built for you before you were born and then filling it and complaining as little as possible. And in that way, you know, he really is um, the archetypical conservative, you know, anti-freedom, anti-individuality, anti-individual expression, pro-hierarchy, you know, pro-obedience. Very important component. But while that's happening, the kid is having fun because he or she knows that dad is still protecting them despite the appearance of potential. I'm just going to skip the rest of this projection stuff because this video was supposed to be on simps. You know, the funny thing is, if I wanted to do a video on how it's important to have a father around in the family, I could do an infinitely better, infinitely better job of it than this. I could absolutely support my point. Um, much more substantively than this. I could convince you guys that you need a father in your family if I wanted to. This is really bad. Harm. All right, yep. All moms mom. are like your mom and all dads are like your dad. We've seen that toddlers whose dads encouraged exploring while said... Okay. He's still... Sometimes up there and I was like, hi, dad. And he, he's... Like, he's all of it. The fact that is women, there was no excuse. Are we back? Are we back to Sims? Actually, living with dads are less likely to have discipline, and researchers consistently find that fathers who spend time with their children give their children the gifts of self control. Okay. You're probably going to lust after women on the internet instead of going out and meeting actual women in real life. And again, this is not an excuse. There was no excuse for simping ever. Don't do it. But what is simping? You kind of. You left it kind of poorly defined. Because you just lumped all behavior you think men shouldn't engage in into simping. But we can acknowledge that boys raised without fathers are set up for failure. And again, that doesn't mean that they're always going to fail, but it does mean that they're going to have to overcome a lot more. And the implications of this are very serious. We've talked a lot about that before, along with... And I should point out, by the way, there is no, um, there is no evidence to suggest that you need a man in your family. Now, single parent households without a dad are bad because there are kids being raised by one parent. A parent who usually has to work two or three fucking jobs, meaning that they don't have much time to spend with their kids. Yeah, usually in poverty. Obviously not having a dad around is bad if the alternative to, not ha to, to having a dad around is to have a one parent household. That doesn't say anything intrinsically about men's role in raising children. It has more to do with, say, for example, the second income earner's role in raising children. Uh, what's caused the single motherhood rates? Of I know some of you guys think this video is boring, but A, I haven't done Doyle in like eight months, and B, it's really important for us to recognize how pseudo-intellectual tra traditional conservatism gets pushed. This is legitimate stuff for you and for me to learn from. This is how you convince young disaffected men that the only way to alleviate their, um, their existential suffering is to return to restrictive, destructive social roles that he only knows about because he's imagining and filling in the gaps of what he saw in fucking 1950s TV series. Oh, yeah. And by the way, if you ever want to know what the scientific consensus is on a specific subject, what we know is a great site, Public Policy Research Portal, because it collects meta-analyses. Below are 75 studies concluding that the children of gay or lesbian parents fare no worse than other children's. Click here to jump to the four studies concluding that children of gay and lesbian parents face disadvantages. Now, those disadvantages may not necessarily be a product of the gay or lesbian parents, but rather social stigma. There's a reason why they worded it this way. This is a massive, overwhelming statistical plurality indicating that everything John Doyle is saying here about not having a man around, because it has to tie back to the importance of masculinity and traditional conservatism, is complete horseshit. Massive horseshit. I'm going to post this in chat in case any of you guys ever want to take a peep. Very useful stuff, you know. It's always fun to see data disproving what people say.
to increase in the first place. Um, but for now, we're just kind of focused on how it emotionally and socially, basically developmentally handicaps children, but particularly young men. And so then aside from that, we have the declining testosterone levels of Western men. So first we'll talk about some of the things that are causing that, but then Western men. I'm doing the parentheses here. We'll talk about why it's bad. So basically, one of the biggest issues with testosterone levels is the amount of stuff that we're putting into our bodies that kill testosterone. Yeah, it's like a food thing. And this isn't just the phytoestrogens. Ooh. This is junk food, too. And part well, hold on. What was that? Bodies that kill testosterone. And this isn't just the phytoestrogens. It's not the phytoestrogens at all, actually, because phytoestrogens are plant estrogen. It has no effect on humans. Phytoestrogens aren't estrogen. So it's not that at all. That's the soy meme. You guys know the soy meme? Because soy has phytoestrogens. It, it has nothing to do with human estrogen. It's completely unrelated. So I don't know why we're looking at this very large man. This is junk food too. And part of the reason for that is that when you add fat tissue, it literally starts to convert the testosterone in your body into estrogen. But part of that would also be the soy boy phenomenon. Again, right? Ha, soy boy is a funny meme, but there's truth behind it. Basically, soybeans contain high amounts of phytoestrogens, which are- Ah, he's, do he's doing it again! He's doing it again! They can't! This video came out like a week ago! They can't! Even when all of the pseudoscience is completely debunked, they run right back to it. Soy vey? I'm gonna- I'm gonna be charitable and assume this isn't from a Nazi site. I don't know. I'm- I'm feeling suspicious. ...are organic compounds that mimic the female hormone estrogen. No, they don't. They do not mimic the female hormone estrogen in any way, shape, or form. They're just called phytoestrogens because scientists are fucking lamos and they just reuse names all the time. Phytoestrogens have nothing to do with estrogens. It's completely different. It's completely different. They mimic it in shape. Yeah, mimicking a molecular compound in shape means about as much to its effect on the human body as mimicking its color when it's colorized by fucking science organizations in the human body and in animal studies they've been shown to reduce testosterone levels and research from the department of nutrition at the harvard school of public health found that men who ate at least half a serving a day of soy had on average 34 million fewer sperm per milliliter than those who skipped soy side note sperm counts have decreased 60 percent in the last 40 years in the yeah but that has nothing to do with testosterone levels also animal studies this is literally this is literally just the fucking H-Bomber guy video. Yeah, yeah, H-Bomber. So in case anyone is curious, and I know everyone has seen this video, but he's done, he's done the research, and I haven't. In case you ever want to see, hey there, you might have- This H-Bomber guy video debunks literally everything here. It's just another way for, uh, for, for pea-brained, um, uh, demagogues to make you fear monger um, over what it is you're putting in your body so you can um, sort of uh, redirect that general level of suspicion towards your physiology and the physiologies of others. Yeah, this video literally goes over the same articles. Everything that he's saying here has been completely debunked. And I know John Doyle knows that this has happened because everyone knows about this video who talks about this subject and he nonetheless still pushes it because John Doyle doesn't care whether or not he's saying something that's factually accurate. The West, not just because of soy, but while we're on the topic, I feel like it's important to note. Also important to note. I thought this video was about simps. Okay, guys, remember what I said about conservatives not or fascists not being able to um, leverage socioeconomic um, understandings of things. So they have to resort to the biological because essentialism is the only thing they're capable of understanding. This is such a perfect representation of that fact. This is a video about simps, a term that only came to public use in the past year! I know the term has existed for that, but I, the, the whole like everyone calling everyone else a simp, this is relatively recent. We had simp, we had soy boy, we a lot of words we run through, okay? This is all an incredibly recent fucking phenomenon, and this guy has spent more than half of the video talking about dads and cum. And again, and listen, me too, John Doyle, I also wish that you had gotten the daddy dick that you craved in, in, in your youth, okay? And I guess today, because you are still very, very young. But I came here to talk about simps. Everything you've posted so far is irrelevant or untrue. This is boring, John.
note. Skip! And the industry totaled four and a half billion dollars. Still talking about soy! Which was as of like now stuff into baby formula. And that's just Still a talking about soy! As of like 1990. Low T, right? You know, testosterone even matter for men, right? He's still, he's still talking about soy and testosterone that your best case scenario is going to be in a situation where you are free to reach your own potential without anyone getting in your way or holding you back. Conversely, if you're a man who's not strong, you're not confident, you're anxious, you know that your best case scenario is going to be in a situation where the outcome is equal for everyone. What the fuck are we talking about? Weak men want equality? Wait, what, what is what is this pseudo philosophy? So if you're a man who is strong, capable, confident, ready to compete, you know that your best case scenario is going to be in a situation where you are free to reach your own potential without anyone getting in your way or holding you back. And if you have empathy, which John Doyle earlier said was a virtue, you, if you're strong, would agree that everyone should be able to enjoy that freedom to reach their own potential without anyone holding them back. I completely agree, John Doyle, yes. Strong people, want to make the world a fair playground because that allows everyone to reach their potential. And weak beta males want to reinforce traditional hierarchies because their mediocre asses could never cut it unless society was privileged in their favor. I completely agree. Conversely, if you're a man who's in a situation compete with a system that is going to produce the best results for you, which is a system not- What are we- If you're listening, if a guy ever tells you that he's a feminist, he's lying to you and you should point and laugh, and I want to say, by the way, this is a common right-wing meme that there are no male feminists because they're all like thirsting for pussy or whatever. And I do, want, and I want to say this. So I have two things to say in this. For one, I have gotten an obscene amount of pussy, in part because I'm a feminist. Do you know how I do it? I don't do it by walking up to girls and telling them I'm a feminist or how great they are or how evil men are. I do it by just being around women and just being fucking normal and hanging out with them and flirting with them. And the feminism helps me not be fucking weird. That's the secret. That's the secret sauce right there. I can just chill around girls, and because I'm a feminist, I'm not constantly fucking internal sweaty manning. I'm, I'm not dabbing a bunch of fucking cloth, cloths against my face, imagining uh, like all the, oh, well, hmm. Well, I want to just hang out and watch this movie, but the femoid mind isn't capable of understanding the production that I'm interested in watching. Not to mention, I noticed her glance two times in the past 16 minutes over at Dylan over there, who is at least three inches taller than me. I know I'm losing her attention. If I can get her more drunk now, there might still be a chance. No, I can just chill. And that gets me laid. It's very easy. You know? And likewise, it is a cruel reflection of how empty these men are inside, like John Doyle, where their thought is, oh, a man is a feminist? There's no way a man would ever want to be that. Just pointing that out. It's just a cruel reflection of their internal world that they can't fathom. Like, but, but I'm a feminist. Ha ha ha, simp. And just so we're clear, you can believe that men and women are- Got- got him. Highly intellectual. Ha ha ha. Equal in the sense that neither is better than the other without being a feminist, which is what most people believe nowadays anyway. Whoa, 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 hey, hey, mm. But- but I'm a feminist. Ha ha ha, simp. Yeah, okay, okay. And just so we're clear, you can believe that men and women are equal in the sense that neither- Equal in what sense? There is better than the other without, without being a feminist, which is- Well, no. Feminism is- an ideology which has at its heart the goal of gender equality, at least third wave feminism, intersectionality. What most people believe nowadays anyway, but- You don't believe that though. This whole video was John Doyle talking about biological essentialism and how mothers and fathers are like inherently different from one another. This, this whole, this entire video lays bare the fact that he does not believe men and e women are equal. His weird little Instagram vertical video screed at the beginning was about how like men and women are different, but the, the rule of female subservience means that it's men, the simps, who actually caused the problem to begin with. So no, you don't get to call that card. Now you've got a generation of weak men. They're not socialized. They're not confident. Now, no evidence to suggest this. 
This could in theory be corrected if there wasn't something enabling the propagation of this behavior, but this is where social media comes into play. Social media is where most of the simping comes into play. Social media enables these men to hide behind screens and interact with women artificially. <laughs> social media is what enables girls to post pictures of themselves and wait for their orbiters to feed them external gratification. And again, we so again, where are we guys wait, do you want to know something that literally blows this entire narrative apart? This idea that modern social media and low T males and soy boys and feminism are what lead to this behavior guys. The entire practice of courting a woman for a millennia in medieval Europe was infinitely simpier than anything that goes on in social media right now. Holy shit. The entire history of courting. You do realize what that was, guys. Like, do you have any idea? People would literally duel for milady. That wasn't a joke back then. Back then, if there were two guys and a girl in a room, and they were nobles, and the, both of them liked the girl, the one of the guys could actually challenge the other one to a duel to the death over the attention of this woman. These men were w literally willing, literal white knights, were willing to kill and die over imagined insults against their miladies. These were high T males born to nobility with men and women raising them and often many more with, with court aides and what have you. And they would still do this far, far worse than anything that happens today. Yeah, and the woman didn't even have to fuck you afterwards. Crazy, right? So that that right there, that single-handedly blows this entire narrative out of the water. Do you guys want to know the actual reason why there's an imbalance between men and women when it comes to dating roles and attention given versus attention received? It's patriarchy. It, it is patriarchy. That is the thing. Hierarchies can only exist through distinction, and it is through the exacerbated distinction we see in a patriarchal society between men and women that the incredibly toxic dating expectations between the two groups have reached the heights that we have seen throughout history. What we have today is a fuckload better than the old days of courting women, I'll tell you that. But yeah, you know what? If you don't want women to be the fucking gatekeepers of sexuality, stop shaming them for fucking a lot of people. If you don't want dudes to, um, to, to be a, a wandering malayed incels who never get pussy unless they're willing to put up money, then A, encourage men to engage in beautification the same way women are encouraged to, and B, elevate men as arbiters of beauty as well, meaning that women will be more expected, more socialized into courting men as well. That's it. It's that simple. It's that simple, folks. That's just what happens. It's just a toxic difference between two disparate social groups that has been made worse through millennia of agitation. Wow, amazing. We could have a future where, you know what? Maybe there are some dudes simping after ladies. Maybe there are some ladies simping after dudes. Wouldn't that be nice? Some people simp after me, but I mean, but not everyone can be a YouTube streamer or whatever. You know, the, the most sexually desirable of all professions. That's it. We might do one about the thoughts in the future and their problems, but for now, let's just focus on this. Everyone knows how to be nice. Right? And everyone knows how to be uh, Not really. There are a lot of mean people out there. Be mean. You don't need to be socialized to know that. Like in the sense that you can either shower someone with gratification or with hostility. And there's nothing wrong with being nice to a girl. But for a simp, that's all that they have. They overcompensate for their lack of drive, their natural swagger, if you will, lack of ability to compete with... Simping isn't really being nice to girls, though. It's really weird elevation that kind of dehumanizes them, usually.
Well, I don't have to compete, I'll just be nice. I'll orbit her, I'll give her attention and compliments and money and everything and eventually she's gonna remember me and she's gonna wanna be with me. Like, get a grip, man. Women don't like nice guys. Men okay, okay. Jesus. That beta orbiter stuff isn't being a nice guy. It's being a nice guy. People usually like nice people. Yeah, this is some Stefan Molyneux shit right here. There is so much to get into, because I feel like I'm reading, like, the incel forums. I feel like I'm reading brain cells before it got nuked, you know? So just to clarify, okay? Just to clarify, and God, he's projecting right now. Listening to a 17-year-old or whatever the fuck he is screeching about how women don't like nice guys. Whew. Listen. This, like, weird simping stuff isn't being, like, a nice guy. You're not being, like, nice to women when you do that. You're being nice. You're being phony. You're being deferential in the hopes of fucking. That's not good, okay? It's not great, all right? Being nice, like just being nice to people. Yeah, women like that. Everyone likes that. There are some people who don't like that. There are men who will interpret kindness as antagonism. And there are women who, usually because they've been brainwashed after abusive prior partners, um, don't believe they are worthy of kindness and will deliberately seek out partners who treat them poorly. These are things that happen. But most of the time, most of the time, people like being treated nicely. Men like nice women, but women do not like nice guys. And again, that doesn't mean that women don't like it when guys are nice, but women don't like guys who are nice guys. Do you get it? Okay, well, you, okay, well, that, okay, then we agree. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. And the reason for that is that happiness is linked with your level of agreeableness. And your level of agreeableness is linked with your income, your status, your dominance, etc. So there's a fuck ton of correlative factors here that you can't actually make any strong causative statements on because a bunch of different things correlate with a bunch of other different things and isolating those variables is near impossible. Are we, we done with this? Yes. This whole... 5% of this video was... simp science. Man, women don't want a guy who is not dominant, who's making less than they are. It's not a... See, okay, th again, this is, this is weird. Some women want less dominant partners. Some women actually prefer, prefer submissive partners. A lot of women prefer equal partners. Um, and also, I mean, I mean, I guess everyone wants a partner who makes a lot of money, but I don't think, but th I think that's pretty ubiquitous. Let me, uh, um, let me tell you this, just, you know, um, I'll tell you this. I, I make a decent amount of money now because of you guys, but if I didn't, you know, I got to say, I would like the idea of having a girlfriend who makes a lot of money. That does sound pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like that's just a general uh, desire. I, I don't think that's very gendered necessarily. Attractive. In fact, women say happiness, which is linked with agreeableness and being nice, is one of the least attractive traits in men. But men say it's the most attractive trait in women. But with pro Interesting. So are women... So... There are two non-compatible beliefs here. I'm going to assume that all of this is true, which it probably isn't. But even if it was, this guy over here, this dude Arino, probably believes that women partners seek based on characteristics that would be advantageous to child rearing. But then they actively seek out unhappy people. Now here, so here's a, uh, a question for you guys. What do you think is more likely that females are biologically predisposed to not seek happy men or that decades of media that idealizes the grouchy stoic man um, who growls a lot and gets shit done may have affected their general perception of what is uh, ideal in a partner. And likewise, you know, media has portrayed the ideal woman, for the most part, as being pretty happy. That's the Manic Pixie Dream Girl stuff, you know? Is it possible that people are affected by media and that advertising, which is a multi-billion dollar business, isn't completely fake? Is it possible that our preferences can be influenced by society, and we are not absolute slaves to our biology? Well, it depends on who you watch. Because if you watch John Doyle, when he's not completely making up claims and projecting from his sad childhood, 
he will often arrive at positions and then assert, just sort of naturally, that they are a biological essentialism. And therefore, because of a naturalistic fallacy, that they should be pursued. You know? It's a really common one, again, with fascists. Because to acknowledge that societal influences can change how a person behaves exonerates people of behavior um, in, in many cases. It allows you to blame a society rather than to blame an individual. You will note, however, that I guarantee you people like John Doyle are the first ones to cry about how schools are discriminatory against boys because they, um, because they, um, uh, because boys don't perform as well as girls there. Yeah, John Doyle has definitely gotten worse since the last time I uh, checked this boy out. Actually, wait, does he have a video on that? I'm actually so curious. Boys are just dumb, sorry. Wow, unironic misandry. Huh. You know, when you look up John Doyle on YouTube, you get not John Doyle stuff. And on how to stop mass shootings. That we this is one of the ones we went over together on stream. White kid beaten by black kids for supporting Trump. Heck off, Kami. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why is demand for private education booming? I don't know. Is it to get the white kids away from the black kids? Imagine if the races were swapped. It's okay to be white. Black culture is scary stuff. Sorry for slavery. If my child ever brought this home to me, I would burn down half of the local ghetto. Hmm. Yeah, this is just from a month ago. Damn, John Doyle's come a long way. Come on, come a long way over the past uh, few months. I really like this face he's making here. I think we've gotten everything we can get out of this video. Wait, shouldn't boys be toughened up though? Yeah, I think that toughening up in a and boys and girls. I think that being tough is generally a good thing. I don't know what that has to do with this video though.